Hi, my name is Mark. So again, welcome to the series Let's Compose a Song. Again, like you didn't know, I'm super original for titles. If you haven't watched the last episode, I highly suggest you do, because in that episode, I asked you guys in which direction should we take the song in. Basically, we have an intro that's slightly jazzy, and we have a verse that's slightly more spooky sounding. And because we can take it in either direction, I told you guys to leave a comment telling me if you wanted to see a more spooky version of the song, or a more jazzy version of the song. This week I'm proposing the more spooky version, next week I'll be proposing the more jazzy version, and after we compare the two of them, we can then choose which one we want. Sounds cool? I hope it does. So let's hear the full song and see where we can get it to. Okay, so straight after hearing it, there is something I want to do, and I just realized that maybe I should have this with a little, not this much of a gear. I think that maybe we should loop this part. Okay, so since this is the spooky version, I think I want to build on this melody, but then perhaps modulate to a different key. Up a minor third, I think that can maybe sound cool. And before we keep going, I just want to say please subscribe to my channel. You probably know that YouTube's been acting a little bit weird lately, even if you subscribe to a channel, those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box. So if you want to stay tuned to my channel, not only do I suggest subscribing and turning on all the notifications, but also following me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff there, like improvised solos and jamming over backing tracks, and generally wherever I am up to at the moment, but I always post it about my videos. Links for the usual subjects will be below, but in general, at Guitar. And since you're done there, please consider leaving a like and perhaps share this video on social media, I highly appreciate it. Okay, so it took a while for me to do some commentary. I was really focused on what I wanted to do, because when it comes to modulations, I'm a real fan of like Danny Elfman's style of modulation, because it does something pretty interesting, which is every time the lick is, or the lick, or the melody, or the rip, is going to end, he takes the last note as a leading tone to another chord that many times isn't in key, and he takes that same sort of melody and transposes it to the key or to fit over the chord he wants to. And I sort of tried to do the same thing, again trying to gather that spooky vibe, but not too spooky. We don't want to completely do like a Halloween song or something. So here's how it sounds, and then I'll explain it later. We'll come from the chorus. Okay, so the first part we already had, up to here, I think. Yeah, again, if you want some sort of an explanation on that part, you can watch the other video, 
but in this video I just repeated the first part of the melody. And here's where we modulate. The last note, the leading tone, is a B. And we jump straight to an E flat. I thought of modulating the whole thing like a minor third up or a tone and a half up and by using B as the leading tone, B is the minor sixth of E flat. So if we're in E flat minor, it really works well because B is a common tone between kind of C harmonic minor-ish, C melodic minor-ish to E flat minor. The first part is pretty much the same thing, just a little variation on the melody, but it is again following the chords, we're in E flat minor following the E flat minor chord. And right here, we start out with going to a B minor chord, which if we transpose a minor turn down is pretty much what we had before, but now we use the note D, which is the minor third of the B minor chord, to do a chromatic resolution of D. D flat, or in this case, it probably would be C sharp, to resolve to C, which is the fifth of F minor, which is the next chord we go to. And again, we're doing that sort of chromatic modulation, which can be a really useful tool when you just want to move between chords that don't necessarily connect. For instance, in this case, going from the chord B minor to the chord F minor, they are a triton apart, and just by using the chords themselves, they don't really share any notes. So by going for a strong note in the chord, in this case the B minor chord, going for the D, which is the third of the chord, to then ninth, and then effect effectively flat nine, but it is now the fifth of the next chord. I think it works well. And again the next part. And then from and then from F minor. We go to F sharp major, which if you've watched the first video where we do the intro, you may be aware of this, we're kind of going for that Phrygian-ish sound, in this case it can be sort of considered an F Phrygian sound, and in this case I was trying to outline the chord progression, E diminished, and then F sharp major, sort of, and here we're just descending like a G diminished triad or something like it, or an E diminished triad. We can kind of connect them through the whole half diminished scale, so we can make sense of that theoretically. But as always, if you just play something or you notate something and it sounds good to you, you don't need to worry why it sounds good, but if you know why it sounds good, you can explain it to others and you can do it quicker next time. So let's go from this last part. And since in here we were in E diminished F sharp major, those are two chords that we can easily use to modulate to B minor. And in, B, and in this B minor part, I pretty much copied the first part, the original riff. In C minor, just transpose it to have a semitone down. And I just noticed I did the time signature wrong. That's not how I'm feeling it. This is how I'm feeling it. B minor chord going to a B flat major chord and if you noticed it I chose an F right here which even though is the sharp fourth of B minor probably doesn't work doesn't really work well with our regular B minor because it kind of clashes with the F sharp but again we're using it as a leading tone because that F is the fifth of B flat major and then we take that B flat major we take and we transform it into a B flat augmented or maybe an F sharp augmented, they're symmetrical so nobody really cares. And in here, we're kind of outlining this B flat major 7 sharp 11 chord and the melody notes are landing on that E, which is the sharp 11th of the chord, and on D, which is the third of the chord. And we use that B flat major 7 chord to resolve back to C minor. It's not the most perfect resolution back, but it kind of works. It's sort of like if we were in C Dorian now, sort of, if you don't really focus much on the sharp fourth, but 
this is an important part of this, which is even though, again, I'm not really using the most perfect cadence or anything, but it sounds cool. And because it's not the most perfect cadence, it actually adds this extra tension here and there, which I don't know about you, but I enjoy. This part is exactly the same, just copy pasted from the first part back to C minor. And now in the last part is where we change up a little bit. Because we do a little run up here. Which is pretty much descending uh, probably the harm C harmonic minor scale. And in this part I sort of think about it as a B dominant 7th flat 13th. And we're pretty much outlining the chord. And I think it can sound cool if we do this. I changed the time signature room from 9-8 to, at least I think it was 9-8, to 15-16 because by adding this last 16th note it kind, of, it kind of gives you this jump to the rest we're going to do next. But just outlining this part we're doing a G major chord right here, then we're doing like a D diminished chord, a diminished chord diatonical to the scale of C harmonic minor, which one you can think of the root on. And as you can hear that little 16th note with the ta -da, it kind of adds that little tension like you just pulled the brakes on the song and as you can see the next part, which we're not going to finish today, is a rest that, I don't know, maybe in the next episode, depending on how the series can go, maybe we can do a slower part that can build up to the chorus or maybe to the main riff. We'll see, you guys can decide and of course taking in consideration that the next video, which will come on next week, we're going to try and approach this verse in a more jazzy, less spooky way, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, I guess that's it. Again, thank you so very much for watching, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and on all the notifications, follow me on social media, and if you can, share this video on social media, I'd highly appreciate it. Was there something I missed, something I should have said, leave it in the comments below. And since you're down there, I have this dedicated series called Yate, You Ask, I Teach. I know, pretty boring, generic, and self-explanatory title. But as the name implies, and as you can probably guess, in that series I pretty much teach anything you guys have in the comment section below. Well, guitar and their music related, of course. So if there's something you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comment section with the hashtag E8. And also check out some of my other videos. Other than these sorts of composing videos, I also do some other lesson-y sort of stuff. I play guitar, so if you're a guitar player, or any other type of musician, really, there's probably something you can learn from those videos. But yeah, again, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and on all the notifications. But yeah, I guess that's it. Cheers! Oh,